forgot what we were talking about at first, but I was talking about something and then I was like, oops, sorry, I forgot you're not human. Because you're an angel, right? Angels are not human and they've never been human. So I just left it off and started asking questions about Jesus. And I'm asking her, what does he actually look like? Does he look like those paintings and drawings that people make him seem to be? Or did they, you know, try to change something around? Like, what does he actually look like? Because I'm curious, I need to know. Because I know for a fact that Jesus was not a white man, okay? Middle Eastern man from Israel. Can nobody tell me he's white? Right when I started asking, is that accurate? Are the stories accurate? Is what's in the Bible true? Because you know, whoever wrote the Bible, they might have twisted some things around, but I don't know, I'm just guessing. That was a no to both. That was a solid no. No, he does not look like those whitewashed paintings that y'all see everywhere. So, okay. All right, good. Okay, that answers my question. The angel realizes that I'm not in need of serious emotional help. Like that's when she sends me back. She tells me to call out for her in a couple days if I'm still feeling sad or there I am back in my body in bed. Based on appearance, she had like, you know those Renaissance paintings? She had big almond shaped eyes, and no I'm not talking about aliens. Pale skin, she looked human but but not entirely human. Light brown wavy hair, a long a long white robe. Really tall. That was all that I remembered and I woke up, rode that down at six in the morning, and went back to sleep. This one was very overwhelming and personal emotional experience for me. This involves a loved one who passed away when I was I was like 15 or 16. They were supposed to show up to my birthday and they couldn't make it because they had passed away. I was able to reach out and connect and communicate with this loved one. After I had that experience, I woke up and I already had tears rolling down my face like I was already crying in my sleep but I think I'm okay now to talk about it and not mess up my makeup this happened at 5 in the morning um, but of course while I'm astral traveling there's no time time does not exist in this realm so I don't know what time it is until I wake up I was in a garden like a rose garden type of thing walking through the bushes that moment I realized I'm not in my body. Hold on, this this is a dream. I'm I'm not awake and I'm not on earth right now. As soon as I realize I'm somewhere else, spiritually, I'm like, hmm, let's try calling out to a, a loved one, a family member, somebody, and see if they can hear me and actually come through to communicate. Surprisingly, I start feeling the vibrations. I feel the electricity in my brain. I always feel it in my brain. I don't... I would be, I've heard other people like say they feel it all around their body, but I only feel it in my brain. Instantly, I make contact. Somebody heard me and I was about to see who it was. I go from a garden setting to a kitchen. A small kitchen. The walls were yellow or a beige, something like that. There's a small kitchen table in the middle. I'm sitting down at this table. As soon as I recognized the voice of who this was, I could not believe it. Finally, reconnecting since we never got to say goodbye. This loved one has been on the shy side. Even when they were alive, they've kept the shyness. Everything was like kind of blurry. This family member wasn't really like letting me see see them clearly but I knew who it was because I could feel their energy and they called me a nickname that only they called me. No other family member has called me this nickname. As soon as I heard it and they approached the table, no, 
No, I told you I wouldn't cry. I told you I wouldn't get emotional. Stop it. This mascara is not waterproof. So as they're approaching the table and they sit down, this loved one used to call me little one since I was, since I was younger, like a toddler. They would always call me little one. And when they would talk with my mom on the phone, they would ask her, oh, how's the little one? Tell the little one I said hi. As soon as I heard, hi little one, it's like, I know who this is. The button up shirt. I don't remember if it was a white button up shirt or a light blue, but I always had button up shirts. Then they approach the table and they sit down. Only us, the only we would know, like no one else in the family knows this besides my mother. I couldn't clearly see the face, but I knew exactly who this was. All I remember them saying to me was something about, I know you want to know the truth or I know you want to know the story, but you have to wait a while. I was confused, but I kind of have a good guess of what they meant. I did want answers to what happened, what caused their death. I couldn't say goodbye. I had no idea that they were planning to visit me on my birthday. It was going to be a surprise. I had so many questions and I was told, got the reassurance, like, I know you want to know, but you're going to have to wait. As much as I wanted to know, I was okay with that. I had to accept that I need to wait. Well, I accepted, it's like, okay. This is where I started crying. I could feel a, a warm, loving, gentle grab my, my hand. That's when I knew I was crying. The next minute, I'm not in the kitchen anymore. My soul is back in the physical world. Wake up, there's already tears streaming down my face. I had succeeded with communicating to someone who had passed away, someone who is at peace, someone in heaven. That was powerful.